Hi, I'm Guy Powell, and welcome to the next episode of The Backstory on the Shroud of Turin. If you haven't already done so, please visit GuyPowell.com and sign up for more episodes. I am the author of the upcoming book, The Only Witness. It's a historical fiction tracing a possible history of the Shroud over the last two millennia. Today, we're speaking with Bill Meacham. He's a syndenologist who has been involved in the Shroud for a long time and has written a number of books and, and done a lot of research. Let me give you his background and his bio. He was born in Nashville, Tennessee, and was educated at Tulane University in New Orleans, the Sorbonne in Paris, and the Gregorian University of Rome. He's lived in Hong Kong since 1970, first as a short-term United Methodist missionary, teaching English, and later holding positions as an archaeologist at the Hong Kong Museum of History and the Christian Study Center on Chinese Religion and Culture. He was editor of the Hong Kong Archaeological Society from 1973 to 1985 and chairman from 1985 to 1996. From 1980 to 2012, he was honorary research fellow at the Center of Asian Studies at the Hong Kong University. And since 2012, he's worked on various research projects and has published several interesting books. So Bill, welcome and so good to have you. Well, pleasure to be here, yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. So tell us your backstory on getting involved in the Shroud of Turin. Well, it, it, it happened in 1981 out of the blue. You know, I'd been, I'd, I'd studied in Rome for a year and in Paris for a year and never really came across the Shroud at all, not even a mention of it, strangely enough. And I was in a pontifical university in Rome, but I was doing early church history and archaeology uh, and some Roman archaeology. Um, in 1981, I was sitting in the office of the Archaeological Society in uh, Kowloon, and th the magazines that we are subscribed to usually come in one by one. So this, uh, on this day, Archaeology magazine came in, and I was browsing through it, and I saw an article by Pelicurian Evans entitled The Shroud Under the Microscope. And so I thought, oh, what's this? And it had a big picture of the Shroud of Honey and cloth in Italy with an image of Jesus on it. I almost flipped it past it, but I started to read like the first paragraph, and that hooked me on what exactly they were doing there. By the time I got to the end of the article, I was really puzzled. I said, what is this? Because that article, in a nutshell, to me, raised a lot of questions like, how, how did this image get there if they couldn't find any, any substance to it? What is this image? So I started digging into the trial a little bit about uh, Ian Wilson's book, which fascinated me. And then um, some, a couple of other magazines, and I started writing letters to various people. In those days, of course, there was no internet. I didn't even have a computer back then. Well, way back, 81, 82. And people would send me stuff, and the more I got, the more I read on it, the more I really got more and more hooked on it. And finally, I decided, this is, of course, when Stirp's peer-reviewed science was being published, right? And, and so I decided... I'm going to write this up and submit it to Current Anthropology, which is uh, probably the world's most uh, foremost anthropological journal. And I'd had one article published in there, so I'd had some dealings with the editor. And I sent that article in, and about a few few months later, it came back, and he said he had eight reviews, four were positive, two were negative, and two were neutral. And so he didn't think he could publish it. And I said, and he also sent the comments of the reviewers. And so I wrote back to him and I said, these comments are not fair, and here's why. And he reviewed it and he said, yeah, so we're gonna go with it. So he published that in Current Anthropology, along with a lot of, uh, they send, for their major articles, they send out to like 20 or 25 scholars of different fields and different uh, points of view. They comment on it and then I get to write a reply. So that was published in, in 1983. And that suddenly made me famous in the Shroud world, kind of undeserved, but because I was really writing on a lot of other people's research, I had just pulled it together, you know. So that's what 